In this series of short videos, we will be introducing you to the Military Aviation Preservation Society, or MAPS, Air Museum, and some of the aircraft and displays that are located at our facility in Green, Ohio. We hope that these presentations enhance your appreciation of history and those that lived it. Man's fascination with flight and a desire to fly has always been with us. A quote attributed to Leonardo da Vinci gives you only one view of this obsession. It reads, once you have tasted flight, you will forever walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward, for there you have been, and there you will always long to return. At MAPS, the history of aviation is more than just airplanes. It is about those who have dreamed of flying, those who ultimately made those dreams a reality, and those that have experienced the freedom of flight. We hope to share that and more with you in these video presentations. We hope to cover the general background of each type of aircraft, as well as the history of the actual airframe that we have here at the museum. In some cases, we have dedicated specific aircraft to local men and women. If this is the case, we will discuss why we decided to dedicate an aircraft to them. In this video, we will be introducing you to an aircraft that was, at the time of production of this video, the newest aircraft acquisition in the MAPS Air Museum collection, Northrop Grumman EA-6B Prowler. The EA-6B was flown by the United States Navy and the United States Marine Corps in almost all American combat operations since its first deployment in July of 1971 and was frequently flown in support of U.S. Air Force missions. The first version of the Prowler, the EA-6A, was the initial electronic warfare version of the Grumman A-6 Intruder attack aircraft then being used by the United States Marine Corps and the United States Navy. The EA-6A was a direct conversion of the standard A-6 Intruder airframe with two seats equipped with electronic warfare or EW equipment. The electric intruder was developed for the United States Marine Corps during the 1960s to replace its EF-10B Sky Knight. A total of 27 EA-6As were produced, with 15 of these being newly manufactured ones, the other 12 being rebuilt A-6s. The EA-6A was the first aircraft employed in a modified electronic countermeasures or ECM escort role, escorting Marine A-6As attacking heavily defended targets at night deep in North Vietnam. It was instrumental in reducing losses of Navy and Marine attack and reconnaissance aircraft to SA-2 surface-to-air missiles and radar-controlled anti-aircraft artillery systems. Most of these EA-6As were retired from the service in the 1970s, with the last few being used by the Navy in two electronic attack aggressor squadrons with all examples finally retired in the 1990s. The EA-6A was essentially an interim airplane until the more advanced EA-6B could be designed and built. The substantially redesigned and more advanced EA-6B was developed as a replacement for the EKA-3B Sky Warriors for the United States Navy and the EA-6A for the Marine Corps. The most visible change to the aircraft was lengthening of the forward fuselage to create a four-seat cockpit. An EA-6B aircrew consists of one pilot and three electronic countermeasure officers, or ECMOs, although it is not uncommon for only two ECMOs to be used on missions. The canopy has a shading of gold to protect the crew against the radio emissions that the electronic warfare equipment produces. On November 14, 1966, Grumman was awarded a $12.7 million contract 
to develop an EA-6B prototype. The Prowler first flew on May 25, 1968, and it entered service on aircraft carriers in July of 1971. Three prototype EA-6Bs were converted from A-6As, and five additional EA-6Bs were used as test and development airplanes. A total of 170 EA-6B production aircraft were manufactured from 1966 through 1991. Among the EA-6B's missions were protection of fleet surface units and supporting ground attack and ground force missions by disrupting enemy electromagnetic activity including communications and radar systems. Additional missions included gathering tactical electronic intelligence within a combat zone and attacking enemy radar sites with anti-radiation missiles such as the AGM-88 HARM missile. As the EA-6B is the only aircraft in our collection that focused on the area of electronic warfare, a term not familiar to many, we need to take a moment to define the terms electronic warfare and what ESM, ECM, and SEAD mean as this type of aircraft works in all three areas. Electronic warfare, or EW, is any action involving the use of the electromagnetic spectrum or directing energy to control the spectrum, attack an enemy, or impede enemy assaults. The purpose of electronic warfare is to deny an opponent the advantage of and ensure friendly, unimpeded access to the electromagnetic spectrum. Electronic warfare can be used against communication systems and networks, radar and other detection and tracking equipment, or other assets, both in the military and civilian environment. ESM, or Electronic Support Measures, describe of a type of electronic warfare involving actions to detect, intercept, identify, locate, record, and analyze sources of radiated electromagnetic energy. This is done to identify threats such as warning that a fire control radar has locked onto a combat vehicle, ship, or aircraft, and to provide protection for our electronic signals and communication systems. It is also used to provide intelligence on an opponent's signal, communications, and electronics capabilities. An electronic countermeasure, or ECM, is an electrical or electronic device designed to trick or deceive radar, sonar, or other electronic detection systems. It may be used both offensively and defensively to deny targeting information to an enemy. The system may make many separate targets appear to the enemy, or make the real target appear to disappear or move about randomly. It is used effectively to protect aircraft from guided missiles. Offensive ECM often takes the form of jamming enemy electronic tracking or communication systems. Suppression of Enemy Air Defenses, or SEAD, is any military action taken to suppress or destroy enemy surface-based air defenses, including not only surface-to-air missiles and anti-aircraft artillery, but also systems such as early warning radar and command control and communications functions, while also marking other targets to be destroyed by an airstrike. Suppression can be accomplished by physically destroying the system or by disrupting or deceiving them through other electronic warfare systems. The EA-6B entered service with Navy Electronic Attack Squadron, or VAQ-129, on September 1, 1970. With its arrival, VAQ-129 commenced its career as the Fleet Replacement Squadron for all EA-6B fleet commands. As a Fleet Replacement Squadron, VAQ-129 was charged with training all EA-6B aviators and developing standard operating procedures for the maintenance and operation of the aircraft. The squadron was permanently stationed at Naval Air Station Whitby Island in Puget Sound, Washington. 
In January of 1971, VAQ-132 became the first operational squadron to transition to the new EA-6B Prowler. This squadron began its first combat deployment to Vietnam on USS America as part of Carrier Air Wing 8 on June 5, 1972. As the first Prowler squadron in Vietnam, VAQ-132 ultimately flew combat support flights from six different carriers on Yankee Station in the Gulf of Tonkin. In May of 1971, the Lancers of VAQ-131 became the second operational squadron to transition to the standard version of the Grumman EA-6B Prowler. VAQ-131 was deployed aboard the USS Enterprise to the Western Pacific or Westpac area on September 12, 1972 as part of Carrier Air Wing 14. VAQ-131 and VAQ-132 were the only EA-6B squadrons active during the war in Vietnam. These two squadrons of EA-6B Prowlers flew 720 sorties during the Vietnam War in support of U.S. Navy and Marine attack aircraft and U.S. Air Force B-52 bombers. After decommissioning in late 1971, VAQ-134 was reactivated as an EA-6B squadron in 1972 and moved their home port to NAS Whitby Island. Assigned to the USS Constellation with Carrier Air Wing 9, they embarked on their first deployment with the EA-6B to Westpac on January 5, 1973, just prior to the terminations of hostilities. The EA-6B Prowler was continually upgraded over the years. The first such upgrade was named Expanded Capability, or XCAP, beginning in 1973. Then came the Improved Capability, or ICAP version in 1976, and ICAP-2 in 1980. The ICAP-2 upgrade provided the EA-6B with the capability of firing AGM-45 Shrike and AGM-88 Harm missiles. The AGM-45 Shrike is an anti-radiation missile designed to home in on hostile anti-aircraft radar. The AGM-88 Harm, or high-speed anti-radiation missile, is a tactical air-to-surface anti-radiation missile designed to home in on electronic transmissions coming from surface-to-air radar systems. The United States Marine Corps' first EA-6B squadron was Marine Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron, or VMAQ-2. VMAQ-2 transitioned to the Prowler in 1997. All Marine Corps EA-6B squadrons were located at Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point in North Carolina. All but one of the Navy's active duty EA-6B squadrons were based at Naval Air Station Whitby Island. VAQ-136 was stationed at Naval Air Facility Atsugi, Japan as part of Carrier Air Wing 5, the forward-deployed Naval Forces Air Wing that embarks aboard the Japan-based USS George Washington. VAQ-209, the Navy Reserve's sole EA-6B squadron, was stationed at Naval Air Facility Washington in Maryland. During the 1983 invasion of Grenada, Four Prowlers supported the operation from the USS Independence. Following the Achille Loro hijacking, on October 10, 1985, Prowlers from the USS Saratoga provided ESM support during the interception of the Egypt Air 737 carrying four of the hijackers. Prowlers jammed Libyan radar operations during Operation El Dorado Canyon on April of 1986. Prowlers from the USS Enterprise jammed Iranian ground control intercept radars, surface-to-air missile guidance radars, and communication systems during Operation Praying Mantis on April 18, 1988. A total of 39 EA-6B Prowlers were involved in Operation Desert Storm in 1991, 27 from six aircraft carriers,
and 12 from Marine Corps bases. During the 4,600 flight hours, Prowlers fired over 150 Harm missiles. Navy Prowlers flew 1,132 sorties and the Marines flew 516 missions with no losses. For a period of 11 years, from the 1998 retirement of the United States Air Force EF-111 Raven electronic warfare aircraft, the EA-6B was the only dedicated electronic warfare plane available for missions by the United States Navy, the United States Marine Corps, and the United States Air Force. In 2001, 124 Prowlers remained divided between 12 Navy, 4 Marine, and 4 Joint Navy Air Force Expeditionary Squadrons. Although once considered being replaced by common support aircraft, that plane failed to materialize. In 2009, the Navy EA-6B Prowler community began transitioning to the EA-18G Growler, a new electronic warfare derivative of the FA-18F Super Hornet. The last Navy deployment was on USS George H.W. Bush in November of 2014 with VAQ-134. The last Navy operational flight took place on May 27, 2015. Following its last deployment, the EA-6B was withdrawn from U.S. Navy service in June of 2015. A total of 27 Navy squadrons flew the EA-6B during its service career from 1971 to 2015. The U.S. Marines, however, planned on using the EA-6B for another three to five years. VMAQ-3 began flying Prowler missions against Islamic State militants over Iraq in June of 2014. Once Operation Inherent Resolve began in August, VMAQ-4 took over. The Prowlers were the first Marine Corps aircraft in Syria and supported strike packages, airdrops, and electronic warfare requirements against militants. By January 2015, the five aircraft of VMAQ-4 had flown 800 hours during 110 sorties in support of operations in both countries, including supporting coalition airstrikes and providing electronic warfare support for Iraqi army forces to degrade enemy systems. The Prowler was used in counter-improvised explosive device or IED operations in the conflict in Afghanistan by jamming remote detonating devices such as garage door openers or cellular telephones. Two Prowler squadrons were also based in Iraq working the same mission. In April of 2016, a squadron of EA-6B Prowlers from Marine Corps Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 4, based at Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point, North Carolina, was deployed to Inserlik Air Base, Turkey, for operations over Syria. The last Marine EA-6B Squadron, VMAQ-2, completed its last operational deployment to Inserlik Air Base in Turkey and Al Udeed Air Base in Qatar in November of 2018. A total of four Marine Corps squadrons flew the EA-6B from 1977 to 2019. The airframe that is on display at the MAPS Air Museum is a Northrop Grumman EA-6B Prowler. In developing the histories of the aircraft located at the MAPS Air Museum, all available resources are researched and compiled. While most of the source materials are in agreement, some of the information obtained from various sources is inconsistent with the majority of the other data. If this is the case, the information that presented represents the facts as presented by official sources whenever possible. The EA-6B displayed at MAPS was constructed by Grumman Aerospace Corporation, later Northrop Grumman, at the Peconic River facility in Calverton, New York, under a Navy contract in 1986. 
After construction, it was accepted by the Department of the Navy on May 19, 1988, with Bureau Number 163047. The aircraft was initially assigned to Electronic Attack Squadron 141 on May 27, 1988. VAQ 141, like all of the Navy's electronic warfare aircraft, was based at Naval Air Station Whitby Island, Oak Harbor, Washington. On June 8, 1988, 163047 was transferred to VAQ 129 at the same location. On January 11, 1989, the aircraft was transferred to VAQ-142 at NAS Whitby Island. On November 4, 1989, VAQ-142 was deployed as part of Carrier Air Wing 6 aboard the USS Forrestal to the Mediterranean Sea as part of the U.S. 6th Fleet. That deployment ended on April 12, 1990. On March 13, 1991, 163047 was transferred to VAQ-139 at Whitby Island, but only remained with that squadron until June 4, 1991. On August 10, 1991, the EA-6B was assigned to VAQ-136 and was initially stationed at NAS Atsugi, Japan. While assigned to VAQ-136, the aircraft was deployed aboard the USS Independence for fleet exercises in the Western Pacific or West Pac area and the Sea of Japan from November 15, 1991 to November 24, 1991. Between April 15, 1992 and October 12, 1992, the squadron was deployed again aboard the USS Independence to the Persian Gulf in support of Operation Southern Watch. The USS Independence served as the home for 163047 when deployed to the Westpac area in the Sea of Japan in support of Team Spirit exercises on the Korean Peninsula between February 15, 1993 and March 25, 1993. A return to the Westpac area aboard the USS Independence occurred between May 11, 1993 and July 1, 1993. Between November 17, 1993 and March 17, 1993, the Independence with VAQ-136 and 163047 returned to the Persian Gulf supporting Operation Southern Watch. The aircraft's final deployment aboard the USS Independence occurred between July 19, 1994 and August 29, 1994 in support of RIMPAC, the Rim of the Pacific Exercise, the world's largest international maritime warfare exercise. On July 4, 1995, 163047 returned to NAS Whitby Island, now assigned to VAQ-129. It was reassigned to VAQ-128 on October 30, 1997. On June 20, 1998, the aircraft was assigned to VAQ-132. It was deployed on that date aboard the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower to the Mediterranean Sea conducting flights during three separate periods in support of NATO's Bosnia and Herzegovina peacekeeping efforts in Operation Deliberate Force, as well as flights in the Arabian Gulf in support of Operation Southern Watch. That deployment ended on December 10, 1998. On April 13, 1999, the EA-6B was assigned to VAQ-138 at NAS Whitby Island and was deployed to Aviano Air Base in Italy. It conducted combat operations over Serbia and Kosovo during Operation Allied Force. On July 12, 1999, 163047 was assigned to VAQ-129 and deployed aboard the USS George Washington to the Mediterranean and Persian Gulf 
until December 19, 2000. The aircraft returned to NAS Whitby Island, assigned to VAQ-130, on July 25, 2001, and was reassigned to VAQ-129 on August 29, 2002. It remained at Oak Island, Washington until February 16, 2006. On that date, it was transferred to VAQ-137 and deployed to Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni, Japan. In May of 2006, the squadron deployed aboard the USS Enterprise in support of the global war on terrorism. In March of 2007, the squadron was deployed to Al-Assad Air Base, Iraq, supporting Operation Enduring Freedom, then aboard the USS Enterprise to the Mediterranean Sea in July of that year. In April of 2008, 163047 found itself aboard the USS George Washington for Partnership of the Americas, a cruise around South America. Assigned to VAQ-139 on February 12, 2009, the aircraft stayed at NAS Whitby Island until October 3rd. At that point, the squadron moved to NAS San Diego and was deployed aboard the USS Ronald Reagan for fleet exercises. Upon return on November 23, 2009, the squadron returned to NAS Whitby Island. It was again deployed aboard the USS Ronald Reagan on June 2, 2010 for RIMPAC exercises off the coast of Canada and on February 2, 2011 to the Westpac Central Command Area of Operations. October 25, 2011 started a period of stateside assignments for the EA-6B. On that date, it was assigned to VAQ-142 at Whitby Island. On March 7, 2012, VAQ-142 was moved to NAS Jacksonville, Florida. On August 1, 2013, 163047 was reassigned to Marine Electronic Attack Squadron, or VMAQ-4, also located at Jacksonville. On September 3rd, the aircraft returned to VAQ-142. At that point, 163047 was permanently transferred to the Marine Corps, with assignment to VMAQ-4, stationed at Marine Corps Air Station, or MCAS, Cherry Point, North Carolina. During this assignment, the aircraft was deployed twice, the first time to Al Udeed Air Base, Qatar, in August of 2014, and in April of 2016 to Enserlik Air Base in Turkey. The final assignment for the aircraft was with VMAQ-2 starting on June 8, 2017. During this assignment, 163047 was again deployed to Inserlik Air Base Turkey in October of 2017 and Al Udeed Air Base Qatar in March of 2018. 163047 arrived at MAPS on January 17, 2019 for decommissioning and display. The aircraft was flown to MAPS by a Marine crew from VMAQ-2 at MCAS Cherry Point making it one of the only two MAPS aircraft that did not require significant restoration upon arrival. Folding its wings for the last time, 163047 ended its 30-year career of service to this nation. In the weeks after arrival, a team of enlisted Marines from Cherry Point decommissioned the aircraft. 163047 was one of the last three EA-6B prowlers on active duty. The final two airframes were retired on March 8, 2019, with one at static display at the National Air and Space Museum in Chantilly, Virginia, and the other at the Frontiers of Flight Museum at Dallas Love Field in Texas. The aircraft at MAPS is on permanent loan from the National Museum of the Marine Corps at Triangle, Virginia.